This is part two of transportation problem, which focus on nose-west corner cell method. In part one, we discussed three methods used for testing initial feasible storage. These are nose-west corner cell method, risk cost method, and Vogel's approximation method. In this part and in the upcoming series, we will discuss each of these methods. Now let's directly proceed to the nose-west corner cell method. The Northwest Corner Rule is one of the techniques used for determining initial feasible solution for a transportation problem. The name Northwest Corner is used for this method because the first cell selected to be basic variable, that is, the cell selected to allocate as much flow as possible is the upper left corner cell, that is the Northwest Corner cell. For better exposition of steps involved in setting initial feasible solution by using this method, let's start by example. The example is this. Determine the initial feasible solution for the undermentioned transportation problem by using Northwest corner cell method and calculate the resulted cost. Unit costs are given in bird. This is a tableau containing four origins and five destination areas. The supplies from each origins are origin one supply is equal to 4,500, origin two supply is equal to 3,000, origin three supply is equal to 4,000, and origin four supply is equal to 6,000. The demand of each destination area is given at the bottom of the tableau. That's demand of destination area 1 is equal to 3,000. Demand of destination area 2 is equal to 4,000. Demand of destination area 3 is equal to 4,000. Demand of destination area 4 is equal to 3,500. And demand of destination area 5 is equal to 3,000. The values in the table are costs for transporting a single product from a certain origin to a particular destination area. For example, these three represent cost for transporting a single product from origin 1 to destination area 1. Two represent cost for transporting a single product from origin 1 to destination area 2. Seven represents cost for transporting a single product from origin 1 to destination area 3. Five represent cost for transporting a single product from origin 1 to destination area 4. Six represents cost for transporting single product from origin 1 to destination area 5. This 4 represents cost for transporting a single product from origin 3 to destination area 1, and so on. It's recommended to follow a step-by-step -step approach for solving problems of such type. So let's proceed with these steps. Before proceeding to step 1, we have to check that whether the model is balanced or not, because transportation algorithm is based on balanced transportation model. Supply is equal to 4,500 plus 3,000 plus 4,000 plus 6,000, which is equal to 17,500. And demand is equal to 3,000 plus 4,000 plus 4,000 plus 3,500 plus 3,000, which is equal to 17,500. Since demand is equal to supply, we can continue with the steps without adding dummy source or a dummy destination. So let's proceed with step one. Let's select the northwest corner cell and allocate as much flow as possible to the selected cell. The northwest corner cell is a cell at the top left corner of the tableau. The row at the top corner is row 1, and column at the left hand margin is column 1. The cell at the intersection of row 1 and column 1 is this cell, that's the top left corner cell or the northwest corner cell. How much should we allocate to this selected northwest corner cell? For such allocation, compare supply and demand corresponding to the selected cell, and then allocate the smaller amount from these two. The supply corresponding to the selected cell is 4,500, and demand corresponding to it is 3,000. 3,000 is less than 4,500, so we have to allocate 3,000 to the selected cell. After search allocation, we have to proceed to step two. That is, reduce rope supply and column and demand by the amount allocated to the selected northwest corner cell. The amount allocated to the selected northwest corner cell is 3,000, since we have to reduce this 3,000 from each of demand and supply corresponding to this cell. Supply corresponding to the cell is 4,500, so 4,500 minus 3,000 is equal to 1,500. And demand corresponding to this cell is 3,000. 3,000 minus 3,000 is zero. After such allocation, if all the supply is consumed, reduce it to zero and then eliminate the corresponding row from further consideration by drawing a line through it. All the supply is not consumed, rather 1,500 units is left unused. The other requirement, if all demand is fulfilled, reduce it to zero and eliminate the corresponding column from further consideration by drawing a line through it. All the demand is fulfilled and hence it reduces to zero. We have to eliminate this column from further consideration by drawing a line through it like this. And then we'll continue to the next step. That's step three. 
Repeat step one and step two until all the demand and supply equal to zero, meaning identify the uncrossed out northwest corner cell, allocate as much flow as possible to that cell, reduce column and demand and row supply by the amount allocated to the selected cell, and eliminate the row with zero supply and column with zero demands. All the processes proceed with such iteration until all the supply is consumed and all the demand is fulfilled. Since column one is deleted, the active column at the left hand margin is column two, and the row at the top is row one. The cell at the intersection of column two and row one is the next northwest corner cell. Supply corresponding to this cell is 1500, and demand corresponding to it is 4000. 1500 is less than 4000. Thus, 1,500 has to be allocated to the selected northwest corner cell. To adjust demand and supply corresponding to the allocated cell, we have to detect 1,500 from each of them. But supply is 1,500, so 1,500 minus 1,500 is equal to zero. And demand is 4,000. 4,000 minus 1,500 is equal to 2,500. Since supply is reduced to zero, we have to eliminate row one from further consideration by drawing a line through it like this. Now, we have three supplies left unused and four demands unsatisfied. Hence, we have to continue our allocation by following the steps. Since row one and column one are crossed out, the next northwest corner cell is the one at the intersection of row two and column two. Demand and supply corresponding to the selected northwest corner cell are 2,500 and 3,000 respectively. 2,500 is less than 3,000, so we have to allocate 2,500 to the selected northwest corner cell and then demand and supply will adjust it accordingly. Supply is 3,000, that's 3,000 minus 2,500 is equal to 500. Demand is 1,500, 1,500 minus 1,500 is equal to zero. Demand is reduced to zero, so column two has to be eliminated from further consideration by drawing a line through it. The next northwest corner cell is the top unlined cell next to just deleted column. Supply corresponding to this column is 500 and demand is 4,000, the smaller one is 500, so we have to allocate 500 to the selected cell. The reduction of 500 from the corresponding supply and demand yields 500 minus 500 is equal to zero, and 4,000 minus 500 is equal to 3,500. Since supply is reduced to zero, row two has to be crossed out by drawing a line through it like this. The unlined northwest corner cell is the one at the intersection of row three and column three. Demand corresponding to it is 3,500 and supply corresponding to it is 4,000. 3,500 has to be allocated to this cell because it is a smaller amount. The allocation of 3,500 to this selected cell reduces demand to zero and supply to 500. Column three has to be eliminated from further consideration by drawing a line through it because its demand is fulfilled and no need to ship additional amount to this destination area. From the remaining four active cells, the northwest corner cell is the one at the intersection of row three and column four. Supply corresponding to this cell is 500, and demand corresponding to it is 3,500. 500 has to be allocated to this cell because it's the smaller amount from these two. Supply and demand have to be adjusted by deducting the allocated amount from each of them. Supply is 500, so 500 minus 500 is equal to zero. Demand is 3,500, so 3,500 minus 500 is equal to 3,000. Origin 3 supply is reduced to zero, hence row 3 has to be deleted by drawing a line through it because all its supplies are consumed. From the given four rows, only row 4 is left undeleted and it has two active cells. The left hand cell is considered as the northwest corner cell. Supply corresponding to this cell is 6000 and demand corresponding to it is 3000. The smaller one from this two is 3000, so we have to allocate 3000 to this cell. When 3000 is allocated to this cell, supply will reduce from 6000 to 3000 because 6000 minus 3000 is equal to 3000, and demand will reduce to zero. Since demand for destination 4 is reduced to zero, column 4 has to be crossed out in order to eliminate it from further consideration. The only active cell we left with is the southeast corner cell. Corresponding demand is equal to corresponding supply, which is equal to 3000, and this 3000 has to be allocated to the selected cell. Allocation of 3000 to this cell will reduce both demand and supply to zero. This is the initial feasible solution by using northwest corner cell method. As we can clearly see from the allocated cells, the northwest corner cell method starts us from northwest corner cell and then will follow a zigzag pattern to reach to the southeast corner cell. 
Result total cost for this initial feasible solution is equal to 3000 times 3 plus 1500 times 2 plus 2500 times 5 plus 500 times 2 plus 3500 times 6 plus 500 times 4 plus 3000 times 3 plus 3000 times 5. 3000 times 3 is 9000 plus 1500 times 2 is 3000 plus 1500 times 5 is 12,500 plus 500 times 2 is 1000 plus 3500 times 6 is 21,000 plus 500 times 4 is 2000 plus 3000 times 3 is 9000 plus 3000 times 5 is 15,000. The sum of these values gives us 72,500. By this, I wind up this episode. Goodbye.